Okay, I admit it, I was being a little dramatic with the intro, but we really had a crazy time at Cape Lookout. I mean, it really started out just like any other trip. Uh, we made plans way ahead of time. We bought all kinds of stuff last minute. Uh, we were trying to think of all the fun stuff we're gonna be able to do, and we got to do none of it. It just felt like there was this cloud following us the whole time so the plan was for my sister to follow me she has a tahoe she was going to bring my oldest daughter and my mom along we'll have the two little kids with us and pull the trailer now easy enough we uh we're going to drive six hours the first day and go to a camp spot hit the camp spot stay the night and then drive four hours and make the ferry and we made it to Jordan Lake State Recreation Park. And uh, we had a pre-reserved park uh, spot. It had electric and water. Uh, we back in, start getting set up. They were gonna use a ground tent, a big eight person uh, ground tent. Everybody had their own like queen mattress and everything laid out and plenty enough room. So we start setting that up and uh, somehow a pole snaps and it's broke. And we thought, well, that's not good because we know that the beach, Cape Lookout has a lot of winds and it's already gonna be kind of rough. We decided just to power through and uh, we got food made and everybody got to bed and we got up the next day, packed everything up and headed out towards our ferry ride. So we used uh, Davis Ferry Service, and I know there's like two main ferry services you can use, and Davis was the one, after we made the reservation with them, I read that they were like, not that good. And I was like, ah, crap, of course. So we get there, and I'll show you like some B-roll footage of what it looks like there and all that. Uh, no problems. They were really good. I liked them a lot. I would use them again in a heartbeat. Their store was really clean. The cleanest freaking bathroom I've ever been in. Super, it was good. They had this huge deck on the side of their building, all shaded, looking out over the water. It was awesome. We were like, this, we're just stay here. This is, this is good enough right here. We're just, this is vacation right here on this porch. It was so nice. Um, they loaded us up, wave you on. We were able to get on early um, because some other people didn't show. No call, no shows. So we uh, we got their spot and right on over we went. Easy. I have no complaints about Davis. They were great. Well, it's Nick with Raven's Eye Off-Road. We are Cape Lookout or Harker Island or whatever you want to call it. I don't even know anymore. And uh, it has been an experience. I couldn't record anything yesterday as we were just setting up camp and it was all crazy. But um, I've got a few minutes and the rain just barely misses. You can see it's pretty dark in the back. But what I'm going to do is just go around, show you camp, and um, talk a little bit about it. Let, let's show you camp real quick. Give you the idea of what we're, what we're working with. Put the, the ocean in the background, that'd be cool. As you can see, there's tons of crap. Uh, I have gotten a lot of new gear and I haven't had a chance to do any reviews on it. The uh, Tough Stuff Alpha, uh, freaking awesome. Awesome tent, love it. I swapped out from that uh, to Pui and that was a good decision. 
Uh, there was nothing wrong with the Tapui, but this one has that hard case and it's so much easier to tow. Uh, we also got Julka, the, I forget which one it is, maybe the Nomad, but one that comes with the sink and everything. That's been super nice. Only hiccup with it is one of the fittings was cross-threaded and it leaks, so it constantly kicks the pump on and off. But it's so good, man. You can take a shower, but it is a very thirsty product. It's hard to keep. I mean, you can take five gallons in like a minute, no problem. It flows, but you've got to watch. And it's hard to come by some good water here because obviously we just have salt water. They did tell me I can use salt water as long as I flush it after. Uh, let's see what else we got. The uh, roof nest awning. That is the little wing. I didn't get the big one. They had the big one and I ordered it and they didn't have any in stock. So they gave me a discount on that one. So I grabbed it. Perfect awning. Get that thing. Get one of the roof nest awnings. They're awesome. Love it. One of the best purchases I've made. The uh, trailer that I've made, the off-road trailer. You guys have maybe seen some videos on it. Um, it's been doing good. Uh, we have got I basically got rid of a bunch of the slide pull-out sinks and stuff like that and just kind of let it be dedicated for storage, holding water, and it has a house battery in it um, that we can use to charge things if we need to. I've got solar hookups to charge it. I need to add another one to get a little bit more life out of it because uh, right now it, it doesn't last that long. Uh, and I've been having some hiccups with solar today. I bought an extension cable and for whatever reason, if I plug that extension cable in uh, to the EcoFlow, uh, it will not work. I don't know what's the deal with it is, but so I've been back and forth. It's supposed to be a heat advisory today. The sun has basically just now come out and uh, it, the wind here is absolutely ludicrous it is crazy you are uh you're in for it with the wind like we never thought that okay it's gonna be windy a breeze will be nice it's hot uh, no no fam no it's bad the wind is it feels like 40 miles an hour the whole time last night it sounded like a freight train was just driving down the beach the whole time it's crazy so you got to be prepared for that we haven't had any rain yet. It's supposed to be, it just barely missed us just like 10 minutes ago. Um, I don't really have a real big form factor about how I want to do this video. There's just too much and I've got too much going on to try and talk about a whole lot of things or do reviews on stuff. So one of the very first problems you're going to face when you get there is the crazy wind. Uh, we thought that it would be nice to have some wind because it would be so hot. We had a heat advisory coming up and we said, oh, the wind, a nice breeze in the beach this is going to be golden. And we were wrong because the wind does not stop ever. It blew the entire time. There was twice in like two days that we said, hey, I think, I think the wind stopped for a second. It actually stopped and it would start right again. So all the video that you see me talking, the wind has my beard like sideways. So that should give you an idea. Uh, at night, it was insanity. I thought something was seriously wrong. Like I thought there was a storm coming. I thought everybody's tent was gonna blow away and all this. But one of the things that everybody told us to get was um, these kind of stakes so you could stake and screw them in to the ground you've seen these these are like Walmart screw them into the sand and they won't come back out these work okay <clears throat> they're better than just the pound in kind the pound in kind will eventually come loose because the wind just it's constantly doing this and it wiggles it out I've got something better that we'd used that somebody on a, a Facebook group told me and it's really good really easy and you probably already have it and it is a makeshift sandbag so if you get some plastic bags maybe two or three fill them full of sand tie them off and then you can tie your guy lines to this and then just move them out uh, it works really well 
we uh, we did that on their tent that they bought and on a bunch of the lines because it had like six maybe six to ten uh, lines on it so we used that on a bunch of them and it worked really well and that also means you can adjust them a little easier than having to pull the stake back up and put it down and all that so that's definitely a trick you're going to want to use and also if you're obviously you're probably going to have some kind of an awning or shelter we used our roof nest uh, three, uh 270 awning and uh i was really nervous about leaving it up i thought that the wind was gonna really get a hold of it um we you know the passenger side of my truck was where the wind was coming and i've got the awning on the driver's side so i had a little bit of a of a wall there between it and it would just kind of go over the top of the awning and i put the poles down and into the sand just a little and then we had guy it comes with heavy duty guy lines put those down and these stakes are like real thick beefy beefy stuff and um, stake those down had the lines on it and i never had a problem it was very stable Water is going to be uh, another thing. Um, they have spots on the island there that you can get um, non-potable water. So it's still stuff you can take a shower with and things like that. You could probably filter it and it'd be fine. Um, I'll put a map up right here. Um, if you look, this is um, right here at this dot. There is a spot where um, there's like bathhouses. I didn't go, so it's hard for me to explain it. Uh, there's um, kind of a shower area, communal shower kind of a place, and you can um, clean off and stuff like that, but there's also, a, you can get water there, and there's a place kind of off in the back roads. So this, uh, there's a water spigot in this area here, I'll show you on this map. Uh, that you can go to and it's basically a spigot coming out of the ground with a water hose and you can fill up you know a water jug or that kind of thing there uh, that's going to be your friend there's another one um, up north but we never were up there so I can't tell you exactly where that is uh, there but there was like a another shower bath I think maybe when you get right off the ferry there's water there too they sell ice and um, some other basic stuff once you get off the ferry, you've got to talk to the ladies there. They put the sticker on and all that stuff, and then they'll tell you what all they sell at their little house. So it's kind of neat. Tip number three is the bugs. Um, we were told the bugs were absolutely insane. Uh, you know, that they were um, some sort of weird science experiment gone wrong and it had DNA modified these bugs to where they won't um, they don't care about you know bug spray and citronella candles and all that uh, to be honest don't waste your money on one of those uh, something that you would light and hope that it would keep the bugs away the wind will just carry that off and there's no way uh, that's gonna work um, so you're better off using some kind of protection that is actually on your skin um, I heard different everybody's got their own kind of wives tale sort of thing about what works I never got I don't even think the first bug bite at all uh, my wife was they got her whole arm and I mean the arms gone she's missing her arm now so um, that sucks they put all kinds of stuff on them I never fooled with anything but if you can put something on you like the spray I'm guessing I've heard lotions do good uh, I, I couldn't tell you but it's gonna be um, an experiment and I think certain people are just more prone to getting bug bites there than others there are some big ass flies there though um, keep your tents zipped. 
um, and all that kind of stuff. I didn't have any problems. Like I said, my wife and um, and Willow, uh, our middle daughter, she she did. She got eaten up too. Uh, I don't know. They just like them, but. Some kind of lotion I hear is the best. Uh, I couldn't tell you a brand or a name. I never heard that. Uh, that nobody ever got that far into what worked, you know, as to some certain brand that you can just go out and buy. Um, but some sort of cream is the best. Best way to go, apparently. Tip number four is just travel and setup thoughts. Uh, we had the trailer with the tent on it, and then we had the 270 awning on the truck. Now the 270 awning was up the whole time. We never took it down. It was basically the only way we could get any relief from the wind and some of the sand. Uh, the wind would go over the top and kind of just go on, and you'd have a little bit of a break right there. Uh, so we would set all of our kitchen stuff right against the truck on under the awning and it still didn't matter i mean s sand was falling like snow there uh it was it gets in everything i mean this isn't if you go to the beach i've been to the beach before but this is some other level i don't know if it's just loose sand or what but you can see in the video intro the sand it's just like snaking along the 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 ground the whole time and it it just there was times where it would just come over the whole thing and just fall and i don't even know how it was doing it because it was my truck their ground tent and then my uh, sister's tahoe and it was getting past all that and still on my truck i couldn't believe how it was doing it but it did the best way to travel there like i said there's a back road that you can take it's kind of a one lane so if someone's coming the other way you kind of have to figure out who's gonna pull over and it kind of isn't the easiest. Uh, or you can drive actually on the beach. The best way to do it is drive on the beach closer to the water, not in the water. There's like, the, when the waves come up, they make the, the, the ground really hard and you can drive on that really easy. And I think, I think that's where I got into some trouble with the trailer because I bent the frame in two different places on the off-road trailer. And, um, sorry, there was a bug. <clears throat> I think it was on that because there, there's some like dunage kind of, some like dunage kind of, like some just bumps and stuff. And I think that just kind of hitting those with the water tank and all that, it just kind of, uh, wore down on the frame a little bit. But if you, if you drive on the beach, it's way easier. A lot faster um, for some reason the back road was ultra bumpy it was almost like they took um, uh, like a caterpillar type heavy equipment and sh made that road but the tracks just made it just like like that all the time you're driving on it so I don't know what I don't recommend really using that route unless you have to uh, everything has that when you get there they give you maps of the place and everything's marked um, sometimes the beach will be closed off in certain areas because they'll have the turtles um, nesting there and laying eggs and stuff and they have um, people on four-wheelers and ATVs that go and check on them and they mark it all off so you can't miss it and let's see If you keep your um, setup kind of simple, ours wasn't where we had two families, three, fam three families with us. It was just too much to try and set up and tear down. So we kind of picked one spot and that was the part that I hated because I didn't get to drive the Gladiator on the beach hardly at all. If I did, I had the trailer with me and um, that was sucks. Um, so the awning was basically just protection mode the whole time uh, the tent we didn't want to you want to have to pack up your entire kitchen all their stuff they had the one of the ground tents it was faster to put up and down but it still took us like whenever it was time to leave it probably took us at least an hour and a half two hours to pack everything up you know you've got your shower you've got your awning 
you've got your two tents, you've got your kitchen stuff, you've got two tables, you've got all the stuff you've packed, all the stuff inside, outside. So we ended up just staying put and then they went uh, to the shower place and I just hung around camp. It's a good thing I did because it was getting ready to storm. Uh, you're just constantly doing stuff. So hardly ever got to really relax and enjoy it. Maybe the first night. In dealing with the wind and the sand, one thing I wish we had was an annex. And I talked to my wife about getting one before the trip. Uh, she didn't think we would use it. Um, it turns out you would have used the heck out of that. Just the ability to, um, you know, have screen sides so you can just hang out in there and there's no bugs getting you or blocking them off and being able to rest there and keep the sh have a shady spot um, I think an annex if you've got one definitely take it um, if you don't have one you're thinking about it that's gonna be a, a game changer I think I, I think I read one person at least put their um, put their their cooking stuff in there to keep the sand because like I came back to look at I was setting up um, let's see they all went to the shower I looked and said that looks like rain so I was trying to batten down the hatches so to speak and I looked and the grill we had a blackstone covered in sand and it was under the awning against the truck I don't know how Sam would have to go over and then back in to get on that and it somehow did but if you have an annex, I, I did read one guy kind of put his uh, whole kitchen set up in the annex to keep the sand out of it. Uh, we fixed like sausage and eggs and stuff, and you take a bite and you're eating sand, literally eating sand. And that was like, at that point, I think is when we all just said, we were not prepared. And we <laughs> called the ferry and we're like, you got any openings? And they said, yeah. And so we got out of there. <laughs>